Thanks for clicking the link. We're gonna talk about how to grow your restaurant business. Thanks for tuning in and clicking the link. We're gonna talk about how to grow your restaurant business. Um, this is a really uh, great topic. One, because I you know, personally just love restaurants. Um, and over the years, um, well, I love eating at restaurants and I love food. But over the years, I've, I've helped a number of uh, restaurant owners, um, thousands of restaurant uh, businesses grow. Um, and uh, hopefully I can help you grow today as well too. Today I'm gonna to talk about three really important areas to help grow and improve your restaurant business. The first topic is process. Um, it's so important to have the right processes in place. You know, a lot of times with all businesses um, and all business owners, you start your business, it's great, it's exciting in the beginning, it's fun, and then um, it can get really frustrating because you don't have the right people or right processes in place. Um, there's this book, it's called The E-Myth Revisited. If you've never read it, I really recommend you read it. This book was a game changer for my business. Um, and it made me look at my business in a completely different way. From reading this book, it really put a major focus and an understanding about what processes can do um, in any business. Um, since we've read this book, we've grown probably from, at that point, this is years ago, maybe we had eight or 10 employees. Um, we now have almost 100 employees and processes and systems in place that, that are truly amazing. Um, there's people doing things in our business that I thought no one could ever do but me. So if you find yourself um, saying the same things. Um, at one point, I thought a lot of things were never possible, um, but now um, I, I, I know that they are. At one point, I thought, you know, uh, certain things I did in my business would, would never be possible for anybody else to do. Um, and now those have been passed along to, those specific tasks have been passed along to multiple employees. Um, which is pretty amazing. The best way that I can describe what I'm saying or give some examples about putting processes in place, I mean, you own a restaurant, so think about McDonald's. It sounds so cliche, but you know, there is a system and a process in place for everything that happens in that business. And you know, we looked at our business and said, let's treat this like a franchise. And when you do that, it really, it really is game changing um, and can really eliminate a lot of unnecessary frustration. So what can you do in your business from the way everything works? Maybe it's putting a POS system in to, to manage um, everything properly and understand what you're selling um, and what you're not selling. Um, think about everything that happens from when someone calls to either place a reservation or a takeout order. Or what's the training process for when a new hire comes on, whether it's a new waiter or waitress? Or, a new person that answers the phone, or a new person in the back of the house that's, that's cooking. You know, is there a process and a manual in place for everything that that per, you know, person is responsible for doing? Um, a lot of people overlook this or think it's unnecessary, but if you don't have everything documented and a process in place for every single position, um, it, it's gonna become very challenging when someone leaves and you have to replace, it, replace them with a new person having those systems in place, having a mapped out process, rules um, and, and to-dos for every single position is a game changer. And you'd be surprised, a lot of people at, at your company now can probably help you put um, a lot of those manuals in place. And having a manual for every single position and an onboarding process and training manual is super, super important. So having the right people and process in place will, um, one, not make your life easier, but it will really help with giving your, ensuring and giving your customers a great experience. Because in the restaurant business, if your customers don't have a good experience, they're not coming back. If your customers don't come back, that is not good for business. So that leads me to point number two, is differentiating your restaurant from all the other restaurants um, next to you. It's funny, a lot of people will get so, you know, they start their, their business or restaurant with a vision and they'll get so stuck on, well, this is how it needs to be. And I'll use an example of a really cool story. This is from years back. It was, was a really lovely woman. She owned a pizza restaurant um, in upstate New York. And she was so focused on, I'm a pizza restaurant and I serve pizza and that's it. So she was really dealing with a challenge. She could never break through X amount of sales. She tried a number of different things, um, you know, added some different specialty pizza pies and, and things like that, which is important. And this is just an example, guys. So you may own a different type of business, but maybe you'll pull some things out of this story that can help you. I said to her, do you happen to serve salads? And she said, no. I said, okay. 
I said, do you serve any types of dessert? She said, well, no, we're, we're a pizza place. I said, well, that's interesting. So let's talk about this further. I said, in, in, you know, in years ago, you know, it's, we're in a super healthy you know, world now where everyone doesn't want to eat pizza. But sometimes, you know, uh, you know, mom wants to eat healthy, but the kids want pizza, right? So I said, what if you had the best salads in town? And you had a number, you know, a number of different salad options. Um, and now you can have a family come to you. If part of the family wants to eat healthy, someone can get a salad. If someone else wants pizza, they can get pizza. If someone you know, in town on their lunch break doesn't want pizza because they're being healthy, they can come to you and get the best salad in town. What's stopping you from having the best salad in town? It was kind of hard for her to get over this, but we talked about it a little bit further. And I said, well, what are you doing for dessert? I said, what is really pulling people in to your business and restaurant? Um, and I said, it's so simple. This is going to sound silly, but what if you had, what if you introduced fried Oreos? Again, you might laugh at this. Um, and she did. And I said, but no, think about this. I mean, you, you've got no type of dessert options. You know, not only if someone comes to you for pizza, maybe they can get ice cream now or dessert or ices or whatever it might be. But if you don't have a dessert option, that's another upsell, which typically in, in, in the restaurant business, dessert can be a highly marginal um, and highly profitable um, item on your menu. So after going through this and talking back and forth, and I'll, I'll make a long story short, she implemented the salads and the, um, the fried Oreos um, and some other dessert options. Well, she increased her sales, uh, I think about 30% just from doing those two things. And it completely differentiated her business or her pizza restaurant from all the other pizza restaurants in town. Now she had people coming to her for lunch or for dinner and getting salads. Um, and not pizza. And now she had families coming to her because the kids were screaming to go get the best fried Oreos in town along with pizza. So you think about it, a family now of, you know, a family of four has an option to go to your restaurant or somewhere else's, but what's, what's driving them in? In her case, it was fried Oreos um, that drove people in um, just for that, but they were also getting pizza as well too. And now that added um, more profit to the bottom line. Funny, simple little story. Um, it was really awesome. She grew past the place that she never was just from doing those two things. I think the point is, is sometimes we get so caught up in our business and we have this vision of the way it was supposed to be and you start that way and you stick to it and we don't ever stop and take a step back and say, hey, what else can I do differently here? Uh, maybe you're a steak restaurant or maybe you serve tacos. Maybe you're an Italian restaurant. Maybe you're a, a Japanese restaurant. What are you doing in your restaurant that's different from everybody else's? And what's one or two items that just gets people running into your business? A lot of times we get started, we get set in our ways and we don't ever change things. But stop and take a step back and what's something that you can implement in, on your menu um, that can really drive people in and also inc increase revenues of something that you never served before. Now when they come to your business, they're ordering this and that new item that you introduced because they have to have it. My last point and important one is access to capital. In a restaurant business, you gotta be fresh, you gotta be relevant, you gotta be up to date. Your restaurant, I mean, has to look great. It's gotta be appealing. People have to feel comfortable. It's gotta be new, it's gotta be cleaned and it takes constant updates um, in the front of the house and in the back of the house. Um, equipment goes, ovens go, refrigerators go. So there's always a need for access to capital and you have to stay um, up to date with everything in order to keep your business running um, smoothly and being ahead of the competition. Restaurants in general can have challenges getting financing at banks, but there are a number of different programs and products out there. Um, to help finance uh, your restaurant business. And there's also some really great business lines of credits uh, that are available today that you can kind of keep on the sidelines and use for maybe an, an off or slow month. Maybe it's a slow season. Uh, maybe something breaks unexpectedly and you need to get it repaired overnight and you just don't have the, the cash on hand. And there's also some really great equipment financing products that are available where you can finance that new fridge or freezer or stove over two to five year terms where you don't have to rip a ton of money out of cash flow, you can finance it and still pick up the depreciation right off the first year, which is awesome. Check out section 179, speak with your accountant about it. You can finance equipment, use someone else's money and get that whole depreciation expense the first year, which is amazing and not talked about enough. So in order to grow, um, financing is definitely a must. 
And if you're rocking and rolling in your one location, then maybe it's time to look at a second location. And we can help finance that as well too. If you'd like some help in understanding what financing options are available, uh, please check out the link below. We'd love to help you. Give us a shout and uh, get growing. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.